Maybe, maybe it's your mind. Oh, hello. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yes, okay. A little bit nervous because it's so complicated. I don't know why I do that to me. So uh, let, let's start again. So uh, hello, everyone. So I hope uh, you have had a great conference and so far. So a lot of great um, talks uh, until now. And I hope that my talk will give you some new inspirations about the Swift programming languages. Um, understand its potential and capabilities beyond the Apple ecosystem. Um, I promise to not show much code in case your brain still processing the mathematics behind the particle system from Sophie talk yesterday, so don't worry. Um, but before explaining the topic, um, may I ask which one of you here have a background in electrical engineering? Oh, oh, yeah, great, so some people. So I think we can, for those who have right hand, I think we can agree between us that making software is fun, but uh, creating our own hardware and write software for it is much more awesome, right? <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, joking aside, so my name is An, um, and this is me uh, try to, trying to convince my son to sleep and while watching football and pretending to be a, a electrical engineer. Um, so I, I, I have worked a lot with hardware in my previous life. Um, I have used a low level language um, like assembly or C or C++ to write firmware for such hardware, uh, for, for such devices. Um, and though languages are very unproductive and hard to use safely. Um, then for some reason I, I have gradually switched to writing mainly software and I have settled with Swift in version 1.0 and I really like it. And the main reason why I like Swift, uh, not only because it has better syntax than Objective-C, uh, but it's pretty easy to learn and it's safe language to create great apps for one of the most popular ecosystem nowadays, right? And it's also a language by, by an awesome community like one of you here, uh, suitable for both newcomers and experts. But if we look at the introduction of Swift on its official website, um, we can see that Apple has an intention to make Swift to be a general purpose language that can be used outside of its ecosystem as well. Uh, but obviously, uh, due to the business reasons, the main focus of Apple is to make Swift working great on their platforms and devices. But Thanks to our Swift community, uh, significant efforts have been made to bring the Swift programming language to more platforms and use case. Uh, such as Swift on Server Working Group has been very much mature to uh, bring Swift to server-side applications. And project uh, like Swift Wasm is made to create browser app using Swift by preaching through WebAssembly. And just recently, the browser company has catch a lot of attention from Swift community by releasing their browser app written in Swift for Windows. So those are great achievements from the Swift community. But in this talk, um, uh, I will focus on a new target for the Swift programming language is embedded systems. So what is an embedded system? So an embed embedded system is a combination of uh, computer hardware and software designed for a specific function. So almost uh, all of our electronic devices that we are using today, uh, even the Dyson uh, fan over there, uh, probably has a, uh, also embedded system inside. Um, and in the recent year, you, you hear a lot about the Internet of Things, IoT, right? And also the, the hobby electronic board like Arduino or Raspberry uh, Pi are very cheap and affordable. So there, there, there has been a huge demand for a better way to use high-level programming language for such embedded system programming. And Swift as a safe, fast, and easy to learn programming language has, be, has become a viable option to be used in such low-level res, low, uh, resources environments. And uh, in the last few years, there has been quite a few open source projects trying to bring, bring Swift to embedded systems, such as Swift for Arduino, Swift ARM, or Swift IO. And those proje projects have proved that it's viable to bring Swift to embedded systems. And the great news is 
Swift on embedded system has been, has been endorsed officially by Apple recently. So last year, a detailed document describing a vision of embedded Swift was published in Swift Evolution Repository for review by an Apple employee. And the document has been accepted by the language steering group. And Apple is working actively to create a new working group for embedded Swift. Uh, due to the resource constraints in embedded system, uh, surely we, ca we cannot use uh, Swift in the current form in such environments. So effort will have to be made to shrink down the size of Swift runtime and standard library. So embedded Swift will limit the use of language and standard library features that would require larger uh, Swift runtime while maintaining most of the Swift feature set. So such, um, in, in embedded systems, um, so the program must be very deterministic. So the dynamic behavior must be restricted because you only have very much uh, limited uh, resources on the device. So the dy dynamic features from Swift like classes, indirect en enums, or closure um, could be very much um, stripped out from uh, the, the embedded Swift. The first few steps have been made towards embedded Swift. Some changes in toolchain and compilers infrastructure needed for embedded Swift have been merged into the upstream and can be enabled using the feature flags already. Uh, so, and so also recently, uh, Apple has published an open source library for manipulation of low level memory map input and output, which is intended to be used in uh, low level memory constraints environment like embedded system. So uh, enough theory, um, so I will show you here a demo of the Swift applications running on various type of embedded system. I just recognize that I forget to turn it on. Uh, so let me try to turn it on. Do we have, oh yeah. So what, what we have uh, for the setup here is, um, so I have a, um, Raspberry Pi in the middle, uh, running a Vapor server application written in Swift. The Raspberry Pi connect with a um, LLD Neo Piso um, and a Swift IO playground board. I will go into that board uh, later in more detail. And the firmware for the Swift IO playground board also written, is written in Swift. And there is an uh, iOS application running on the iOS, uh, uh, iOS device, also written in Swift, which will send the command to the server, which in turn can turn on and turn off and change the color of the uh, LED NeoPixel, or um, change the color of the LCD uh, of the Swift IO playground. Uh, I just recognize that I didn't turn on another device. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, like I said, I don't know why I do this to myself. So I might need some support. It, it, it's fine. I think it's fine. <laughs> like it as well. <laughs> yeah. I just want to prove that it's a live yeah. video stream uh, and it's not a recorded video. <laughs> um, so I hope you can see. Yep. That would be great. So, so oh, 
again the setup maybe I, I go in this way so yeah. so again the setup right so we have the Raspberry Pi here um, connect to the Swift IO board and this is the L LED right so this is the app on the iOS so now I will try to turn it on it might work or not oh yeah Woo! come on <laughs> So, so basically what happened is I have a, my own router here, so don't connect to my Wi-Fi. Um, uh, so the, the router uh, will like uh, uh, the, the phone and the Raspberry, ra Raspberry Pi will connect to that router and can uh, communicate with each other so I can turn on in terms of the, the LED and also change its color. Like, ooh, fancy. Um, so that is the first part, so basically uh, it, um, the Raspberry, Raspberry, Raspberry Pi uh, use a GPIO uh, to, uh, to um, control the LED directly. So the next part is uh, the, the phone will send a command to the Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi will send the command to the Swift IO board to change the color of this LCD. Oh yeah, it's working as well. Oh, unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yes, thank you very much. <laughs> um, okay. Now I think it's more difficult than my demo to switch back to my slide. Uh, oh, yeah, it's still working. Uh, uh, F. Oh, no. Oh, no. I think it's fine. Um, uh, it's on. Function F, I did the function F. Uh, I think I have to do this. How can I switch? <laughs> so this is much more difficult than my demo here. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so yeah, that is the demo. It's working great. Um, uh, oh. So yeah, um, I just want to show shortly the firmware of the Swift IO board here. So. What you can see is obviously we have to import some library um, and utilize some uh, variable to control the um, serial communication and the, the LLD screen. And there is a, a infinite loop that will run our program together and inside the program we will basically check the um, uh, data from the serial connection and react um, to, the, to that correct, uh, um, um, correspondingly. So it, you, you can see it's own Swift that we use day by day, right? So it's, it's very fami uh, fa fam familiar, and it has all the characteristic of, um, of, of, of uh, error handling and, and safety that Swift um, bring along with us. The only difference here is uh, this code can only be compiled by a special um, tune chain provided by the creator of this Swift I.O. board. So that, that is what we hope that is going to change with the uh, working group of the Embedded Swift that the current tune chain that Apple provide will be able to compile this code uh, directly. Uh, yeah, I have some links. Uh, I, will distribute it, uh, I, would, I will distribute this uh, presentation later yeah, in, the, in, in this code so that you can take a look. Oh yeah, there is one obligation, one more thing. Oh my God, thumbs up, quick. <laughs> a free Swift AI Playground board yeah, for our uh, audience here. <laughs> so basically, um, the creator of this board, uh, Andy Liu, has sent me um, one additional uh, hardware to give away to our audience. And the way we are going to do that is we will, um, I will show a, a quiz question here uh, on the screen. And uh, the first one who answer the, that correctly in Discord, uh, in which channel? In iOS Con, uh, iOS Con uh, uh, 2024, um, will receive this board. Um, are you ready? Oh, no. Uh, Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, uh, again. <laughs> um, again, again. Yeah, five, 
four, three, two, one. Uh, when did Chris Latner make the first commit to the Swift programming language repository? Uh, you, you, you have to write the full date, month, and year. But you, you, you got it? Uh, just, just wait a bit, um, just in case that people answer is wrongly. So. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, 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 yeah, I, I can show the answer then. <laughs> okay, I, I think we can, we can show the answer, right? Just in case that no one, no one, no one have that, then I can keep that for myself. Then. Uh, <laughs> it's good. Okay, let's uh, uh, let's get the answer uh, from ChatGPT. Uh, uh, so it's July 17, 2010. Herb Weaver? Woo. Yay! Congratulations! <laughs> <laughs> so again, thank you Andy Liu from Mad Machine. Um, I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> okay, so I think I still have one more thing. Uh, no, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs>